Hello. My name is Mrs. Melton. I'm sorry. What do I say? Mrs. Melanin, right? <laughs> Hello. Figure it out. Yo, all right. So look, we're back real quick. Should we do the intro? Nah, that, nah that's not the intro. Okay, so we're going to introduce... The fact that we got this beautiful package, we're going to do a live unboxing, Marriage Be Hard. Marriage Be Hard, y'all. By Kev and Aunt Melissa Fredericks. Fredericks. Exactly, right? <laughs> and so I'm going to go ahead and unbox this. They wow, you haven't even cut it yet? You haven't cut the tape? No, nah, that's how you got to do it. You no, just you gotta, unboxing. You got to be prepared. I am prepared. I'm prepared, I'm prepared with something to cut it with. You're prepared. <sighs> Marriage Be Hard, y'all. Marriage Be Hard, man. <laughs> Should we move this Roadcast Pro? Thing? Okay, let's let's uh, let's go ahead. I I'm gonna hold see. it and I want you to unbox it. What's happening? What go if ahead. something falls out? You know, let's see if Kevin and Melissa are the type to put all the like shredded paper. Oh, in. Now this is sent by a publishing company, <laughs> so I know Kevin and Melissa didn't pack this, but yeah, they sent all the <laughs> popcorn stuff. All okay, right. let's, let's go ahead this and unbox over it. What, what, what is happening? I'm scooting this so you can put this down. Totally, it's gracious. We will um, do it like this. And we got a little popcorn. Shall we do a little crunch, crunch? We got to <gasps> share the popcorn. No. Look at this. What is it? Can we show the camera? Can the camera Ooh. zoom in? Yeah, you want to you wanna bring it back I'll here. We're focused back here. So. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Punch in there. I don't know what's What is this? Is. It's cards. What, what's, what kind of cards are they? Marriage be hard cards. This cover, though is like it's so good it's man. so good they've been like it's cool because they've been showing us these pictures for a while and so i've been already expecting this book and so i didn't know it was so far away but i'm so glad it's here now it's out now marriage it's be hard is out beautiful. now we actually yvette ordered a copy i got good. a copy at barnes and noble today and we have this it's where where was it at barnes and noble was it like in the front where was it at? it was in the bible section <laughs> I was looking for it. I expected to walk in and see it right in the front, yeah. but it was at the Bible section. So we have these Marriage Be Hard cards. It's conversation starters with Kevin Melissa from Kevin Melissa. And we should just do that as an episode. Well, how about we just have them on the podcast? That too. I think we should. As a matter of fact, we're going to have them on the podcast. We will have them on the podcast and we're going to have them talk about something how hard marriage be. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to have them talk about it. <laughs> Can that I see way. the cards? Yeah. Go ahead, babe. You can okay. talk. All right. So, um, yeah. So we're going to have them on the podcast. It's going to be super dope, uh, maybe in a podcast or two, but pretty soon because we want them to be out here promoting this book. And by the time you guys have, but by the time we have them on the podcast, we'll have already read the book so we can have some good questions to ask. But if you have any questions for Kevin, Melissa, leave them in the comment section below. We want to know what you want to know about our guests and our friends, man. Yes, please do that. They, they are. There's nothing else in there. Okay, there's. It's just, <laughs> You're just making a lot of noise. They're really solid people. They got us some popcorn cards and a book. <laughs> and big shout out to Ping Penguin Random House, dropping gems. Yeah. And they sent us a letter too. So make sure you guys check out. Marriage, you, I, I don't want to read on camera. Yeah, I was thinking nightmare. that. I was wondering why you didn't. It's a nightmare. It's like, man, I, it's not even a lot of words. I just, I just, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, <laughs> pick up the book, Marriage Be Hard. Support our friends. Uh, support their, uh, them working together, co-laboring. Um, they give you, they've given you so much free mm -hmm. content. Kevin on stage has been putting out a video every day for like 10 years or something crazy like that. that they have insane. given you the love, um, the Love Hour podcast mm -hmm. for a very long time. Kevin on stage has been in, in, in giving you, adding so much value to the creative community for a long time. Alyssa has been black girl magic over and, <laughs> over, and over and over and over and over again. Um, and it's just beautiful to see them uh, do something together. And I'm excited to read the book. I know you are. Yeah. We'll be talking about it. So why does marriage be hard? Let's go ahead and get into this topic. Actually, we should do the intro. We most definitely should. All right, so let's go ahead and hop into this topic. Hello, my name is Mrs. Melanin. And I'm Belief Mel. And we are here with episode 124 of How, How Married, Married Are, are you? you? 
Okay, my name Believe This is Yvette, and we've been married 12 years. We live in California, and we got four kids. Relationships are scary, and it's very necessary that we share our love of struggles, and we ask how, how married, married are you? Every week on the Thursday, shawty. If you're listening, you're in the wedding party. It's okay if you want to put your hands up. You got the questions. We got the answers. It's, it's chocolate baby story time. Chocolate baby story time. It's, it's chocolate baby story time. One. Two, three, and it's chocolate baby story time. Let's do this. All right, I have one. Okay. All right, you know how you go in the store and you're like, hey, we're going in the store. This is what we're getting. Don't ask me for anything. That's it. The other day, I took Anaya, it was after gymnastics. I took Anaya, I was like, hey, we need to get you a backpack because she needed a new backpack. Her other backpack was a little bit too small. Mm -hmm. So we go to Target. And I say, hey, we're going in here for a backpack. And that's all we're getting. Yeah. Don't ask me about anything else. We're getting a backpack. Yeah. We get into Target. And somehow I ended up in the little girls section. And Anaya goes, Mom, we're here for a backpack. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, well, dang. Mm -hmm. All right now. Okay, you're right. Let's go to the backpack section. Yeah. But I was like in the little girl section. She could have gotten anything or whatever. And she was just like, no, mom, we're here for a backpack. Yeah. I was like, well, I hope that good listening skills just follows you the rest of your life. Yes. Yes. That is uh, <laughs> very important. That geez, She's such she's such Ugh. a good accountability person. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes. Except when it comes to her. Yes. <laughs> Um, man, I've been getting random messages. Um, there was a scene in the office like years ago, of course, and like Andy was texting like one of the characters or whatever, and it was just like the most random text that you just don't need to receive. Like it's not news, it's not information, it's just just random text. Mm -hmm. And um, Theo has been sending me texts. <laughs> Just random videos of the kids throughout the day. Mm -hmm. And one of these videos had Anaya tripping. She looked so bad. She didn't even know he was filming. And I just I just want to say this because he just got his little iPod touch. We're going to have a real problem with him. Filming us and recording us For without real? us knowing. <laughs> making his own videos and stuff like that. I know when the time is right and he figures out exactly what he's capable of and our platform, how much damage he can cause we are going to go down in flames <laughs> we'll be canceled <laughs> we're gonna be canceled quick actually i will not i am very consistent with who i am i'm consistent <laughs> but i'm a definitely a lot more vibrant <laughs> of a father it's like right now you guys probably hear me at, at like like you know 25 percent. i'm usually at 75 <laughs> tripping but yeah, man, that's our chocolate baby story time. <laughs> Let's hop into the topic. We got a couple messages. We got in a couple messages. I've got an Instagram message. Yvette has, has an email, and this is kind of like a, a popular subject uh -huh. right now um, about marriage um, altogether. Um, so. Let's hop into this topic, but explain you the want message. Me to read the message. I think so. I'll just read the message. Are you gonna read the message and the email? Do you want me to read both? I can read both. I'm a good reader. Okay. Well. I read I slow, y'all. I'm dyslexic. I wasn't saying that as a diss against I'm you. I'm dyslexic, guys. I don't. I see words and they don't be there, and I just be saying them, and it's like that's not what that word is. So, Yvette just said I read well. Like I don't understand what that was. Some type of shot. I can't wait till we get to the how married are you this week. I can't wait because by the end of this episode, you will be blushing. Me? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Hello. I just have a quick question. So I just so I just want to get an understanding of what's the benefits of marriage plus the kids. Currently, I debate this with my partner. He believes marriage isn't sacred anymore, and the majority of women nowadays use it as a come up. In terms of trying to take your your money, to take your like and your hard working money. Now. I'm just going to say this. I know you read well, but this got you looking at <laughs> <laughs> But it's how it's written. It's not me. It's the, the scriber. She probably, you know, whatever. I stress to him that, you know, I understand, but why would you feel as though I wouldn't do that? And I don't think you should relate 
a percentage of men into his decision. I really want to know, can you explain the benefits of a man for a man if he's willing to proceed with marriage? I think her main, <clears throat> it's a lot of broken English here. So it wasn't me. Um, I think what she's basically trying to say is that, like, why, like, well, how can you help? Can y'all help me explain to my boo thing that marriage is, is, is a thing that we should do? Basically, like, why should we get married? Mm-hmm. Like the movie. Yeah. But, but not, not the movie. not like the movie. Oof. That movie was a nightmare. <laughs> um, it was a horror flick. I thought so, it was a good movie, but. Why Did I Get Married 2 was terrible. It was scary. And we were engaged then. <laughs> anyway, so we, we, we had this conversation. We started talking about this, and I was like, we should just talk about it on the podcast because I was like, yeah, well, who benefits most from marriage? Right. And it really depends on the relationship. But Yvette looked at me like even when I asked the question, it was like, what do you mean? And so I think a lot of people believe Mm -hmm, men believe that Mm -hmm. women are the prime benefit from marriage. Mostly Mm -hmm. they they, they are the ones that benefit because a man does not need to get married. Right. And I think the whole philosophy behind it is like. Well, women have a biological clock. They, they, you know, they can only have so many kids. They can only get pregnant for a, a certain amount of time. Men can have children well into, they can always have children. You know what I'm saying? Like they can always, you know. Some men, some men have. Yeah, some, well, m- most men, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and I, I, I wanted to talk about this because I want to know what do you think who benefits most from marriage? I believe it's a mutual benefit. benefit. <laughs> you, mutually beneficial. I think it's mu- mutually beneficial. I don't necessarily think that one person benefits more than the other. I think if you look at it in terms of, like if you would ask this question 10 years ago, Glenn would have been the one benefiting the most. If you ask this question now, I'm benefiting the most. <laughs> If you think about it on a financial level, like, you know, back in the day, I was, you know, the one that was bringing in consistent income and whatever. Mm -hmm. And now Glenn is bringing in all the income. And so it's kind of like and he's taking care of me. He my sugar daddy. No, And and back in the day, I was his sugar mama. Why would your voice get so deep? (laughs) I don't know. But, yeah, I think that, like. I think we can't just think about it as far as money exactly. is money's concerned. And that's why I think that that is a stupid question. It, because I think that most of the time when people ask that question or like if anyone were to pose that question, I do believe that most of the time why they say women is because they're thinking about it in financial terms. The expectation is that the woman is not the breadwinner, yada, yada, yada. But that's not necessarily the case everywhere like all the time well it's not just money it's it is also security um what do you mean by security like safety what do you mean by safety like i feel like men are supposed to protect the home like that's what we're supposed to do like if somebody comes to the house and tries to break in and i'm like get him babe (laughs) (laughs) would that be an appropriate response in our relationship most definitely not right so that's another way however Okay. Just because that is not an appropriate response in our relationship doesn't mean it's not an appropriate response in other relationships. There are some women out here who have like Taekwondo, you know, they know how to handle themselves. Yeah, and they married to this men that woman, can't take a punch? <laughs> who knows? Uh, okay. I'm just saying, like, there are some women who wouldn't hesitate to go downstairs and start fighting. Where are these women? I don't you're talking know where about? they at, but they out okay, here. Okay, okay. Come on now. Women. I, I, In the I comment know for section sure. below, I, I know you guys. I know for sure there's some women that are strong and can oh, handle man, themselves. Of course. But I'm saying that like the responsibility of the person who's supposed to take care of the home, it, it provide security is is the is the husband, I think. Mm-hmm. Gender roles, right? If we're all right, go ahead, go ahead. Come on. Hit me with the I don't want to hit you with nothing because I'm not violent and I don't hit you. And this is the second time. Yeah. <laughs> don't you do that. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I think that, I, okay, so I think there is a safety that my presence provides. Yes. I feel better when you are home. 
And so do the kids. And so do the kids. Hey, do they? It's true. I, they've said it. They, you know, like I like it when dad is home. He makes me feel safe. Oh. Do you remember that? No. Do you remember that guy broke into our house? Oh, uh, <laughs> he didn't break in. He just walked, walked in. in. The door was open. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I came back. Did we tell the, that story on the podcast? No, we did not because we were. Out, it was off season. I feel like we need to give context to that. You can't just bring something like that up and then. So, guys, let me tell you something. When Glenn is gone out of town, the most crazy things happen. It is like without any kind of whatever. And so, anyways, this particular day, my mom came over to help watch the kids while I went to Costco. Like, I went grocery shopping. And I get this call. Hey, like, she was completely frazzled. But apparently an old white man <laughs> just with the shirt off, shirtless white man, walked into our home and my mom had to like get him to go out. But it was crazy. He was just he just walked into our home. And so um, she got him the to, doors weren't because locked. we had the screen door open, the security door or whatever you want to call it. And it wasn't locked. And so he just came in. Usually if we close the big door, it locked. Oh, no. After that is when you got all the locks. You were like, oh, well, whatever. I'm, yeah. Okay, go and ahead. And so anywho, long story short, we called the police. And apparently this guy has been kind of, he was, he must have been under the influence or mentally ill or something. Because he was just doing that to a lot of people. Yeah. Like five different houses in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He walked up to our driveway, turned on our Oh, yeah. Water, Glenn looked at the security camera. <laughs> turned on our water and then walked into the house. Now, I'm out of town and I get this call. Have you seen the security cameras? Everything's okay. You know what I'm saying? The best trying to tell me. And then the same week, the, there was a car chase. Oh, my gosh. It's a car chase that ended. <laughs> that is what freaked me out because I just heard this loud noise. But then I saw sirens. And so I went and like looked out the window. And sure enough, y'all, this guy... I found out later, I went outside after it was all settled and asked the police officer, because there was a police officer just right in front of our car. So here is, if you're looking on YouTube, so here is our driveway. And you know, like outside of your driveway, there's a sidewalk. And so there was a car parked on this sidewalk. The guy, he came, we live in a cul-de-sac. So he came, he was being chased by the police. He came down the wrong street and then ended up hitting. No, he jumped out of the car. The car kept rolling oh, yeah, and the, then hit a oh, truck. Oh, why did he jump out of the car? When, he was oh, probably because he saw it was a cul-de-sac. And then on the security cam, you hear the dogs go. Rrr, rrr, and he they the guy bit go, him. Wah! The dogs bit but the But here's guy. the thing. Here's the thing. This is why I don't like to leave town. Because when I leave town, I hear about. All the craziness. All the craziness. But I be trying to let you know about this stuff to protect you. Mm -hmm. But then you don't be paying attention until it's time. I'm gone. I know. And you, because she called me. was like, it's outside. And I don't know what to do. I'm like, where are the kids? Did you secure the house? Did you check all the entrances? Such and such and such. such. She's like, I don't know how you cock it back. <laughs> I forgot. I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm, and I'm on the phone. Like, what? He is, I am pissed but off. But you are so calm. You were really calm. I, yeah, what else am I gonna do? You were very freak calm. out. I was like, "Come on now, this is what we like. This is what I <laughs> get you the stuff for, it, so we know what to do." Yeah, yeah. Anyway, that's what I'm there for. Yes, you do. So when it comes to who's benefiting there, <laughs> are you saying that I don't make you feel safe? <laughs> no, 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 no. You do not make me feel safe. Can you not be so enthusiastic with your no? Well, I just want to make sure you understand that you do not make me feel safe, and I want to feel safe. <laughs> Physically safe? Wait, 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 wait. There's certain things that make me feel safe. Like what? Talk. So, so like sex makes me feel safe. Okay. You know what I mean? Like I don't know why. It's just like it's a it's an intimacy and security there. And I'm kind of like okay, like this is a love language that I understand. And you're sacrificing, even though you're enjoying, you're still <laughs> you're still like giving me something that is sacred to you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um. You know. The weapons make me feel safe. Security cameras make me feel like, what do you mean? Like, but I'm saying like, when it comes to like, when I leave the town, I don't feel comfortable. Because I've, of me? Because I don't know if I'm okay with you. If something happens, are, are you going to be all right? I will. I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. But you I'm can't just survive by yourself. You got kids. You know what I'm saying? So like, that's one of the things where it's like, I know that 
in that situation, you would probably be the beneficiary of that. When I believe that there's plenty of ways, like there's no way that I become me without you. Mm-hmm. No way at all. So I would, before we go there, I need you to back up because you said that I don't make you feel safe. And then you said sex makes you feel safe. Yeah, sex makes you feel safe. So are you suggesting that I don't have sex with you? <laughs> no, no, no. You have sex with me. What is happening here? Because you were so enthusiastic with your no, you don't make me feel safe. So I need you to specify completely okay, well, I'm talking about for safety. our uh, listeners. There's two different kinds of safety. There's like an intimacy safe, mm-hmm. right? Intimately, like, safely, safety. Right? Yeah, like Intimately security, safe. like intimacy. I'm secure. I feel secure. And physical safety. And then, and then like, yeah, physical, you know. Defensive. Defensive, safety. yeah. Like if you're running and jumping over a couch, I'm concerned. If you're walking down the stairs, I'm concerned. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, like if you fall down the stairs, like, and it's happened before a couple times, <laughs> you're, you're kind of clumsy, love. <gasps> oh, baby, I'm not trying to discourage you. Don't I don't want you to. Me. I don't want you to be surprised when we're talking about things that we already know, baby. <laughs> I love you so much. Come on now. So, okay, so I just want to reiterate. Safety described in the ways that I don't make you feel safe. You are describing. A physical safety. Yeah, like not so much the intimacy safety. I'm talking about um I'm talking about like terrain, environment, house. Outsiders. Outsiders, like stuff like that. Okay. I feel like that is one of the things that I'm responsible for. I just wanted to be clear about that. Yeah. And so where you can handle you do a lot of the like intricate, like uh uh processes small decision making like focused you know what i'm saying like decisions for the house that i'm not necessarily great at mm-hmm. you know what i mean and even for me like if i got a flight you're like yo <laughs> how you gonna get there i don't know i'll figure it out i'm gonna get there you about to leave in a little bit the flight don't take off for another well how you gonna get there though i don't know you know what i'm saying like that's your like you're you're strong in those different ways so it's like we benefit from each other and at times it's like, yeah, it's not about like, the, the whole point is like, okay, so pe- the question is, why get married, mm-hmm. you know, and what's the benefit of a man that get married? And this is viral clip going around and um, it went really, it has, they have a like a podcast, I think it's called for Waiting for My Future Wife or- Dear Future Wife. Dear, Dear Future Wife. And the guy says, what's the benefit, right? And the other guy goes- well, you gain you, right? And there is no way in any reality that I become me without you. Like there's no possibility ever because what you have allowed me to see in myself and even apply to myself is something that like you won't even, you won't ever get that back. Like I, I won't, I don't know if I'll ever be able to give that to you. You know what I'm saying? Like an, an identity, a purpose, like you've given me so much. And I'm not saying I know a lot, most of that stuff comes from God, but it's a lot of that stuff is via you just not letting off the gas in some in some areas. And I'm not saying like you, you know, uh, what is it? Um, like nag me to, a, you know, my, my presence and who I am, but you definitely challenged a lot of my thought processes you know what I'm saying, which allowed me to see my, not only my potential, but like who I could become, you Mm -hmm. know? Um, And a lot of that was just you saying, I I trust you. And that responsibility of you saying, hey, I trust you with my family and my future and I'm relying on you, that means that I can't not activate myself. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so... I think when you run across people who are kind of like, well, I don't want to get married because of this, you can't convince them people. They don't want to get married because they believe a certain thing about marriage. And there is nothing about marriage that is fancy, right, that is like, uh, you know, going to change anything. Like, 
we're married because I, I chose you and I wanted, I wanted a covenant with you and I wanted to put it legally. Like I'm willing to prove to you by any means necessary, right? That I'm putting my life on the line. Part of that is marriage, mm-hmm. right? And that's, that's one way to do it. Um, and that everybody doesn't have to do that. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just saying that's what I'm willing to do. And I'm willing to do a lot more, you know. Um, but some people, if you have to convince them to step into marriage or, like, believe that it's going to be something valuable for them, right, they're not built for it. Yeah. And they they <clears throat> they shouldn't even be considered to be married to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you got to convince somebody... And then they're sitting, and if this guy's saying like, hey, well, mostly women do that and it's a come up for them, like, yeah. Oh, my. It's a come up for everybody. Like, everybody benefits. Now, this question that this woman asked here, this lady asked here, is she said, what's the benefit of marrying, uh, like, uh, having kids and the whole thing? It's like, well, that's like life, right? So, like, if you like people and you think you want to, you know, um, you think you're going to be a good parent and you're going to bring productive and loving people into the world or whatever, then that's just like a part of the process. Like you come together and you make more people. That's just like logically this next step to go to. Now that's not for everybody. And some people know they don't want to have kids and that's fine. But when you step into it and say, what's the benefits of it? It's like, I I don't even know how to respond to that. (laughs) The benefits of what? Having children together? So I just want to get an understanding of what's the benefit of marriage plus the kids. Like, what do you mean what's the benefit? Like, there's, I mean, like, it just depends on what you want. You, you could take it several different rate, several different ways. Um, for me, the benefit is that I don't know if I've ever known love for real before having a wife and children. Like, hmm. I don't know if I've ever experienced a calling toward being a man. Hmm. I've only known what was socially acceptable, not the application of it. A son teaches you that. I, I don't ever know. I, I don't think I've known what, um, like, how gentle I can be until I held a baby and it was mine. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't know how full my heart can feel when I, when my daughter looked at me and walked in a room and smiles, mm-hmm. or when Uzi asked me to pick him up. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't know if I could have ever, you know, dealt with any hardship without Yvette by my side, or known the possibilities of my, of my potential and my thinking. There was one point she came in. I was so stressed and freaking out over a small decision. I was crying on a concrete floor, boo-hooing in the garage because I, 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 that was my capacity. My capacity is way beyond that, but I didn't know that at that point. And I thought that day was like the worst day ever. I had a panic attack. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So <clears throat> marriage calls you out of your body into, mm. a, into a, a foundation of a unit. Yeah. Right? So you're a singular person. You exist as one and you do things for one. When you're married, you do things for other, right? And you don't even realize you're doing things for yourself when you're doing them for your wife. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, oh man, yesterday, it was a sex night. Let's talk about it. God. Man, Yvette was telling this story. (laughs) <laughs> Boy, was she telling it. She was telling me about her whole day. <laughs> and I'm just kind of like, I thought we were supposed to be having sex by now. And she just kept talking. It was, she was telling me every ounce of her day. And I'm like. And I didn't even get through everything. I, I was still like, had is more. this foreplay? Or like. <laughs> <laughs> I just needed to talk. Is this a love language? I'm like, man. <laughs> Like, I'm already all lotioned up. <laughs> the lotion is already evaporating off my feet. And the feet are getting crusty by the, the syllable. I'm just like, man, what is going what on? Is the syllable? And she's just steady talking, uh. talking back and forth. And the whole time she's talking about the kids and how hard it was. And I was just like, man, I really want to, but I have an agenda, 
right now. But I knew that, like, in that moment, I was serving you. It wasn't about, like, exactly what I wanted at that moment. <laughs> it was about, like, yo, we were just, I'm like, man, stop being so emotional. Stop. Like focusing on what you want out of this situation. What you were thinking? Oh about my the whole gosh! Thing? The whole time I'm like, oh my gosh! If she talks about Uriah, <laughs> dang, she got to Uriah. <laughs> now she's talking about the dog. I'm like, why are you talking about the dog right now? You know what's finna be going on. <laughs> <laughs> she just kept going. It was babe, so I had no idea. Babe, babe, we hadn't seen each other all day. I know, babe, but we could have <laughs> talked about that after. <laughs> Afterwards, I'm tired. I'm done. I know. But then you fall asleep on the information. You know what I'm saying? Oh, my goodness. Oh. How married are you? I stayed up and listened to that. <laughs> that is not where we're at in this episode. All right. So anyway, yeah, like it, it's not for it's not for the people that don't get it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you shouldn't have to convince nobody to marry you. They just don't get it. You know, um, there's nothing when you love somebody for real, like. And, and you don't really know this in the beginning because there was a time when I, I didn't have a job. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, I want to work at like one of these places, one of these places. And if I was just like, get it, just get a job somewhere, bro. I was like, yeah, but I don't want to work at like Target or nothing like that. I want to work at, and she's like, why not? Just go work at Target. And I was talking, I was like, man, like she just don't get it. Like, and I was talking to a mentor of mine. He was like, man, like you just go work at Target. <laughs> He's like, you have to prove to her that. You have to prove to her that you're willing to do anything. You know, and I was like, what? I married her. He's like, yeah, but that's, that doesn't mean that you're willing to do anything. Mm -hmm. That just means you married her. Mm -hmm. So now, be married. Marry her today. Marry her tomorrow. Marry her at a job. It's like a freaking uh, uh, Green Eggs and Ham book. You know what I'm saying? Like, marry her everywhere. And I think that that in itself is a form of safety, too. And I, I've been kind of quiet on this conversation because I don't necessarily have, like, a solid answer. There's not, I don't know if there, I mean, maybe there's like a biblically based response that we could give or a philosophical or legal or whatever response that we could give. But I think when it comes down to it, marriage itself is a form of security and safety and sacredness that you are offering to the person whom you confess, profess your love to. And so I feel like when you say yes to marrying me or I say yes to marrying you, it says like, dude, I'm committed to you. I want you to know like, yes, it's a legal Binding. document, mm -hmm. whatever that binds you guys together in whatever kind of way. <clears throat> but I also think that it is a genuine commitment that says there's no one else that yeah. I want to spend the rest of my life with. And so it's an outward expression. It's kind of like, and I, I was going to say baptism. I don't know. Don't be offended by that analogy, but I think it's kind of like baptism. We don't, I don't, I don't necessarily think we have to go down underwater and come up in order for us to be saved. Mm -hmm. Like I do believe that we can receive salvation through an intimate conversation with the Lord, whatever, however it happens. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I just think it's, there's a different level of intimacy that comes with making that decision. And I agree with you. If you have to convince someone that you are worthy of being married to, then they don't need to be married. Mm -mm. You don't need to be marrying them. Yeah. And I think that. Uh, but at the same time, I do believe that between this DM and the email that we got, that these people are trying to possibly convince themselves yeah. why it's worth it to get married. Now, we know people who are not married, but have been together their entire life. And Ooh. have children. Who? They married. They got married? They got married. What? Yeah, they got married. When that happened? Why did that happen? Uh, what he, made that happen? I don't know. Homeboy said he wanted to get married. And they got married at the courthouse, I think. And we weren't invited. No, nah, we weren't invited. But I don't care. <laughs> Good for them. Yeah. Never mind. Now I don't know anybody. <laughs> <laughs> you're one. You're one. My one example yeah. just lost. Nah, and nah. even they, I mean, but they had teenage children before that happened, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. So come on now. Yeah. And I think that, you know, I think marriage is scary. Why is it scary? Because you're now responsible and it's in writing. It's a contract. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like, it's it's that thing, you know what I'm saying? Like when, when people 
have that little bit of doubt and they're kind of like, well, you know, we, we hear about it sometimes where like people have one foot in their marriage and one foot out the door. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, just in case this don't work out, let me not really, really, really commit to you, but mm-hmm. I'm here and I'm not going to cheat on you and I love you. Right. And I, and I don't need to get married to you to, sh- to prove to you that, mm-hmm. but it's kind of like, well, cool. But why wouldn't you though? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like, if that's the truth and you're not going anywhere, then why not? You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Th- it's scary. It's it's Yeah, because in your vows, you say, till death do us part. Mm-hmm. So when you get married, you're like jumping all the way in. And there is no out. I mean, there are outs. But if you choose well, there should be no out. It's just a, a, a commitment to the work required in order to... Um, benefit from the refining process that comes from being married to someone. And that's how I think it's mutually beneficial because like Glenn says that I have contributed to the man he is today, but I also believe that Glenn has contributed to the woman that I am today. Mm -hmm. I believe that I was living in a bubble before I um, married Glenn and he didn't subtly pop it. He didn't let the air go out slowly. He just kind of went (laughs) <laughs> what? I think that, Kinda. yeah, I, I agree. I think that there was, I mean, I definitely think that without you making the sacrifices you made early on in our marriage, I wouldn't be who I am. I think that I wouldn't just say you're benefiting off of what, you know what I'm saying, like the work or whatever, but there is a fearless mindset and a risk t- that I'm willing to take that you just don't, you're not like that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So um, I don't think, I think you, I think someone could have done what I what I do, but I think in our dynamic, I'm best for what where I'm at. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, and so a part of that was pretty toxic early on. You just can't make decisions and just go do stuff and create stuff and then it you know what I'm saying like Mm -hmm. that's not reality but it it turned out to be but it wasn't it was only because of the security that your job provided um that we could do that now early on your reasons for getting married are totally different from why you stay married Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying so like you could be like well you know because I love you I want to spend my life with you I want you know to build something together um you know uh you know, I, I don't know, like people come up with all these different reasons. But the, the truth is, like, I already knew that I was willing to serve you for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. Still to this day, I'm willing to serve you for the rest of my life. Whatever that means, you know what I'm saying? And I definitely think marriage looked different for you than it in, in the beginning than it does now. Right? Mm-hmm. What do you mean? Like the decision to get married? No, I think like... I think the commitment, like, I think you are definitely, like, I think I don't think you knew what you were getting yourself into. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I agree. Yeah, because, like, it, early on, it was like, well, this is my job. This is my passion. This is what I want to do. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And as we flip this thing around, like, I can't say that. This is my job. This is my passion. This is what I want to do. Like, I was like, what are we doing? Us, all of us. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like overall you're going to change for the better. You're going to grow. Um, but I do think, you know, you really need to figure out if the person you want to be with or you're with right now is really trying to marry you because they're willing to do anything. You know what I mean? Like I'm willing to do anything for this woman, you know, or they just are like, yeah, uh, I'll do it to to please you. You know what I'm saying? And some people are like, yo, a win is a win. You know what I mean? But I don't think people who think like that are really understanding that they're the main benefit. They're, they're going to benefit as much as the other person. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, And it truly is. You get out what you put in. You know what I'm saying? Like, You can find someone that does something that you're into, or it's like you can love someone to completion. You know what I mean? For who they're becoming and like where they end up, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. Because like at some point, like when it got really hard in our marriage, Mm -hmm. I was just like, well, I'm going to love her through this. Maybe she'll meet me on the other side. (laughs) (laughs) 
Because that's all I got to do. Oh, uh, yeah. That's my superpower. That's all I got. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Amen, brother. Yeah. Yeah. You're not saying enough. I need you to talk more. Anything to add? <laughs> I don't know. I, I say get married. I think that... Um, you want to just say get married? I don't think everybody should be getting married. Yeah, I have something to add. And he's back. Oh, sorry. He's Go ahead, babe. I'm sorry. What I'm just trying heck? to talk a discussion. Go ahead. <laughs> That's it. That's all I got. No, 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 no. You say get married. Why? <laughs> I just think you should. I think that it's a commitment. It's something that you are... Um, it's just another level of commitment. Like somebody can say that they're committed to you. But there is another level of commitment that comes when they're willing to get married. Even though there are things such as polygamy and... What? <laughs> what are those things called? Swingers. What are you doing? You've been obsessed <laughs> with swingers for the past couple episodes. I have been not. Talking about it. I have not. I'm just like, wow, this is a whole thing. On and off the podcast, you've been, been talking about swingers, y'all. <laughs> I've been learning a lot. We might have an update. <laughs> 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 no, but I do believe some people should not get married. Yeah. Wait. Ooh. I, I disagree with you. If you know you've chosen well, if you've written a list, prayed over it, had accountability, they line up, all the things, if you've gone about things the right way then get married why not mm -hmm. i think the i think we should end it with y'all in the comment section what are y'all's thoughts what questions do you have because i'd like to hear how other people are thinking about marriage if you're married what who has benefited the most like do you believe it's a mutual beneficial mutually beneficial relationship or how is it? Both parties are benefiting or... Some of y'all going to have to create another account so your spouse don't see <laughs> Facts. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like, what are your thoughts about this? Like, let's have a conversation in the comment section and then maybe we can come back to this conversation again. Because honestly, like, I would really like to do a little bit more like, what does the Bible say? Mm -hmm. Not that everyone here is accountable to the Bible and maybe we want to go outside of the context of the Bible. But like I am curious how like what scripture says about it. Yeah. I, and I know, too, that like it's dying to self. I am choosing to love my wife before me. Right. Like and and die for her. Like that's really what it is. And it's dying to myself. So there's things about me that do that cannot exist in our relationship. Right. Like. You know, just th certain things, you know what I mean? And I had to learn that several times. And it's cool to have older people who are married that can show you, like, hey, man, like, you can step your game up here. You know what I mean? Because really, we don't know the standards. And I think the truth is, like, a lot of you guys are consuming so much content. Oh, my gosh. And you're consuming so much negative experiences and seeing so much, so many bad relationships that you don't have any, any like, you don't even have a good uh, appetite for, for marriage. You know what I mean? You don't have a a balanced diet of stuff that is helping you believe what, you know, you really want to believe, you know what I mean? And so some of that, most of that you're not going to find on the internet because it's not sensational, right? It's not uh, pleasing to the eye. It's, it's not entertaining. Um, but you might want to get out there and serve some people, you know, nanny for some people, you know what I mean? Hang out, watch somebody kids and just maybe catch their ear, get a mentor couple or you know, go to some conferences and find some people that you can look up to and say, hey, we need to redefine this for ourselves mm. and do some true, true research uh, to help you believe what you want to believe. Right. You got to find that truth for yourself. But if all you do is watch TikTok, hear people argue, uh, watch, you know, the Real Housewives or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Um, and see all your favorite people getting divorced and struggle through marriage. Mm -hmm. Like, I understand why you feel that way. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But don't let somebody play you into believing that, you know, it's 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 a con or a scam that the woman benefits from, you know, only. You know what I mean? Like, I, I've ch I know mo a lot of the men I know, you know what I'm saying? Like, they have grown leaps and bounds from who they were beforehand. You know what I'm saying? Some, I know other dudes who may not so great decisions and they've had to slow down. You know what I'm saying? In different areas. So yeah, like 
It's up to you. Make it what make it what you want it to be. Mm-hmm. Babe, how married are you? I'm so married that I've been kind of noticing your um, office space was kind of cluttered, and you know they say a cluttered mind. What do they say? I don't know what they say, but I know that having a clear space helps with brain something or another thinking clear. Mm-hmm. So anyways, I figured you're in your desk all the time. You're in your office all the time. I should clear your desk. off. So I cleared your desk of all the clutter, vacuumed your floor, tried to dust a little bit, straighten up. And yeah, yeah. I thought I got robbed. <laughs> I thought someone broke in. And, and stole, took all your trash. Talk, took all my trash. Like, what the heck is going on here, man? Thank you, babe. You're and welcome. I, did you use that already as a homemade, are you? No, I did not. Okay. All right. Awesome. Um, <laughs> are you going to cut that part out, Jed? No, no, Question. no. I, I didn't know. I, I thought I thought I heard you say that one already. No, you, we were supposed to say it last week when we recorded and we oh, didn't. Okay, got it. How married are you? <laughs> How married are you, babe? I'm so married. Now, this is, a, this is for me. Mm. Okay. Last week, it was another night we were supposed to have sex. Oh, my gosh. Yvette caught herself taking a glam photo or something, some TikTok where she loved how her, 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 her locks look. <laughs> <laughs> she was showing off her locks at TikTok. It was like, oh, lock growth, lock journey or whatever. <laughs> and then she came to the bed and put a do-rag on <laughs> What is this? <laughs> Where is this going? <laughs> and I took that thing off. I was like, nah, you ain't going to finish show this to TikTok and then give me the, the homie hookup. Nah, buddy. Take that off. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I want to leave. I knew you were going to be embarrassed. And that's just, just how, how married, married we are. We are.